Hi everyone. Um, I'm sure all you, you D1, D4 players find the Grunfeld defence the most annoying defence to meet. Well, after D4, Knight F6, C4, G6, when you play your usual Knight C3, D5 takes, Knight takes E4, Knight takes, Pawn takes, Bishop G7, Bishop C4, or the Knight F3 system. C5, Bishop E3, Castles, Knight E2, Knight C6. You notice that although you have this amazing looking pawn centre, Black has got four pieces aimed at it and also the potential to bring a rook to the D-line. And this pawn is very vulnerable. And, that, and I'm sure um, 1D4 players who play the exchange line have found their centre being mercil mercilessly hacked to pieces by Black's piece pressure loads of times. And I have an antidote to that with a rare line which has been played at the top level proving it is sound and um, it avoids your, your centre getting hacked and you also have more chances of um, hacking the black king up just um, if you want to play this line though I'd say you need to um, play the Siamish against the king's indian because it, one it is very similar positions and two um, black can actually force it into a king's indian still because the line which I give is after g6 you play this move f3 to try and play e4 as quick as possible without knight c3 and also to stop any annoying knight g4s because we want to play bishop e3 and queen d2 and we don't want any knight g4s harassing the bishop because this dark square bishop for whites is going to be the most important piece the idea of f3 is uh, when black plays d5 then there is there is some subtle differences which i think I, which I quite like. Now black may play bishop g7, e4, d6 and after knight c3 we have transposed into the Siamish king's indian say castles bishop e3 or bishop g5 or knight g2 well this is now Siamish king's indian theory which is not the um, this video although I may do some videos on the Siamish because it is good for hacking people up and anyone who thinks the Siamish is unsound, well, Bobby Fisher had a terrible record against it. Anyway, um, back to um, move three. Black Black does have a gambit with e5, which um, Nathan Gaines at the club has done um, a massive booklet on, analysing it. The point being is, um, White's move f3 does weaken the dark squares, which is one of the disadvantages of it. And after takes knight h5. White is black is threatening queen h4 check, and white's extra pawn is doubled, and um, play becomes very sharp. Although white does get the better position, is it that is known as the Adoyan gambit? Knight c6 is an interesting option. E4 now it's a bit like um, a two knights tango, with um, this weird move f3 thrown in. But the main test and what all the Grunfeld players will play is d5. And I will put um, one of my games with this system as a video response. Just so you can see a full game with it in action. And this video um, is more like the basic ideas and the few variations. and So um, you can have success with it. So you play c takes, knight takes and e4. And now you've noticed that in the Grunfeld there would normally be a white knight on c3. And now black has to keep four minor pieces on the board. And because white gets a big space advantage against the Grunfeld, black could be feeling more cramped. And both light square bishops are bad in this position. First of all, knight f6 is bad. And you're going to see how to punish it in the video response game. Um, because it blocks in a bishop, meaning black, black's pressure on d4 isn't as much. And after something like bishop e3... You're just going to play like queen d2, knight c3, knight e2. Or you can play bishop c4 in this line because the knight on b6 doesn't attack it. And then just throw the h pawn and hack him up like I do. Knight b6 is the critical test. Knight c3. And now the plans are is that usually you go for a kingside attack in this line by putting a bishop on e3, a queen on d2, a knight on e2. And then the knight can come to g3 or f4, freeing up the light square bishop. You can castle along and play g4, h4, h5, hack, 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 win, win, win. But black isn't without counterplay. When you do play f3, it isn't a development move. It does weaken the dark squares as well. 
and take away the G1 Knight's best square. But it certainly is um, a very good line, this. And and not many people at club level will know what to do against it. And at least you're not going to get your centre completely hacked. And you don't get this awful pawn on C3. Instead it's on F3 which is supported by a G2 pawn. And the queen side's more solid. Um, Black can throw the A pawn at you. He can mercilessly pressure D4 like in a normal Grunfeld. And... Um, it is, it is a very interesting sharp line. I think Chris Ward plays in it. So bishop g7, bishop b3, castles. And now um, you can play rook c1, which um, you, which involves castling kingside and queenside play, which is good. Because the c line is um, a good point for infiltration. Also possible is queen d2. And, knight, and after knight c6, you can castle long and then hack him up. An instructive error, by the way, or more like an instructive blunder, would be knight g2. Now the white bishop doesn't control c4, and now black plays knight c4. And white's queen and bishop are forked, although the white can protect the bishop. Once that bishop leaves the board, black's dark square bishop is unopposed and very powerful. And white can't make the favourable bishop swap, and will therefore be in trouble. Because also, because um, in this line, black's, white's dark square is a weak. So if black has a dark square bishop and white doesn't, then white's usually in big trouble. So this would be an instructive blunder. Also possible is h4, just hacking them up straight away. This might be good against weaker players. Knight c6, d5. This is a double-edged move because black's bishop now has an open diagonal and black's knight can come to e5. But now h5, we have an incredibly dynamic position. Again, knight g2 in this position is a blunder because uh, although it doesn't attack the queen, knight c4 attacks b2 and the bishop, forcing bishop c1. And now white's queen can't come to d2 or can't get um, behind the bishop. Castles are now, I think the best move is f4, which um, makes e4 more loose, but it's hard to attack and. Um, it makes white's, white's knight can now come to f3, and white has three pawns in the centre. So knight c6. c6 is pretty, looks weird, but um, it's quite good actually. Knight f3, bishop g4, queen d2, with maybe a plan of f5 or bishop h6. And white probably has, has a small advantage here. Although black isn't without counterplay, now his bishop's quite good. And in this line, black doesn't actually really get any bad pieces, but neither does white. And it's it's very good having like all the mine pieces on. Knight c6, d5, and now knight a5 is best, aiming to come into c4 and the rest of his ship. And if a black knight does infiltrate into c4, you should take it off with your light square bishop because that's your bad bishop. Your light squares are already strong. And also, the e3 bishop shouldn't be harassed. Knight b4 isn't as good because after um, bishop e2, black's knight is badly misplaced and doesn't really have any squares. Knight a5, and the only good move, every other move apart from this move, actually gives black an advantage according to Houdini. But this move gives white an advantage, which is bishop d4, to challenge um, black's powerful dark square bishop. Bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, knight c6 looks good for a moment, but after queen d f2, black's knight has to move, and white's pawn center is very strong, and then white can castle queenside and then try and hack black up with the h and g pawns, after the king side's been developed of course. A good move here for black though is a little tactical shot, bishop g4, where queen takes g4 is another positional blunder. Where after um, bishop takes d4, it, it's bishop's opposite colour, but white's dark squares are very, very weak. The black's dark square bishop can't be opposed. White's left for a bad, his bad bishop, black gets his good bishop, and black is easily better here. Also, you notice, what one of the problems I'll, I'll admit of this line is that um, black gets his pieces out very quickly, whereas white's um, sometimes, um, white usually falls behind in development, but... Because you have a lot of space, it is hard for um, 
white spot to take advantage of it. But in this line, black has quite a, a bit of space now. And white needs to get his pieces out in his king castle quickly. Also, it's hard to attack now. Um, black's dark square bishop can fill the dark squared holes then. So white should play bishop e2 and ignore this swap. And now black should now black can trade some pieces off, which is good for him because when you're cramped, you should try and trade pieces off. But after all, they all come off. Black now gets his outpost, but you can kick it. You can kick it away with b3. And now um, knight a3. Um, looks good, but after castle queen side, white is slightly better here because black's knight is misplaced and white's king side play usually comes first. But black isn't without counterplay, and this is this is a very fun position to play. This and um, this opening, I call it a lot. I call it the Hilton system a lot, just for a laugh. Although re the real name is the Alakine anti, anti Grunfeld, the code is D seventy, and um, as you can tell, this line is very good fun. It is not as theoretical as the um, Grunfeld defence, making it more easy to learn. It, it's more about understanding positions rather than memorising variations, which you have to do a lot in the exchange Grunfeld, or you get hacked. And this line is certainly worth um, a, a try at a higher level. Um, also good for hacking weaker players up, as you are, as you are going to see in um, the video. In fact, the guy I played was high rated, didn't he? And... Um, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video and you have fun playing this in your own games. Please leave any comments and thoughts. Thanks very much.